Adobe Medium is a fantastic tool for modeling from references, but you've got to learn how to put those references in. So we're going to do that this week and we'll look at how to put references in around the model like this so you can move the model with the imagery, how to do it like this and have it hanging in the air in front of you. And obviously a bit of a refresh on having a trainer in the air on a, on a, a, a virtual screen in front of you. So let's dive right in and have a look at references in Adobe Medium. Okay, so let's have a look at using reference images to make something like this. I didn't make this in Medium, as it happens, but I thought it was a great one to use because I do have good references for it. So if we were going to tackle it in Medium, this is how I would do it. So the first thing we want to do is to bring some imagery in. So if we go on our non-dominant hand, so for me it's my right hand, pull down on the thumbstick, and there's a little purple icon in the middle there. Now, hopefully you're following along with me from inside your headset, so I am gonna go quite slowly. If you don't know how to do that and you're just watching me on a screen, then go back to last week's video. I'll put a link up above so you can find out how to um, put this video in your, in your VR setup. So click Add Image, and I've just got like a, a dump file here ready for this um, tutorial. So what we'll do is we'll bring this one in. So hit it and hit um, Fire to select it, add it to the screen, and then we've got an image in the screen. So if I pull down on my thumbstick on my non-dominant, it's still there and it's hung in the scene. And that's pretty much how you do it. That's, that, that's how you bring an image into the scene. And then you've got one of them in the scene hanging in the air above you. So you can bring as many of them in as you want. You might want to bring two or three, and you want to position them wherever you want. You want to bring more references in. You can just keep bringing them in. Um, just pick something completely random like this muscle one you can bring that in pop it up there and that's that's the very normal way of adding images and they hang around in the scene and if you are doing what i i suggested last week you may well have me up in the air above you and you might have yours something like this over on the side um the screen that that, that i'm on uh, um over there now if you're not doing that and you're just using um uh, if you're just literally watching me on a, on a 2d screen then this bit doesn't matter so what we now need to do is think about how we would have made this from scratch so we need to put some reference in place so what we can simply do is take this i'm moving around with my left hand my dominant hand as you can see just move these out of the way my hand just froze then for a second so with this one i want to have it somewhere like this as a side reference so how do we pin that to that so it's very, very simple. You just have a look at the one that's highlighted in the scene graph, which is that one. And then you just drag it to the layer that you're working on. So it happens to be this head here. And then that one sticks to that now. So now if I was trying to line that up, I would have get that a bit better by using my grips, these, these things inside. And that, that means I can scale up the imagery the same way that I would a model. I can just line it up visually like that. And bear in mind, if you'd have started this from scratch, you'd be doing it the opposite way around. You'd put your imagery in first. So let's bring that one in and have a look at that head, like so. Pop him at the back. Now we need him to pin to it as well, don't we? So let's just move out of the way. Need that scene graph back. You see how I left it behind there? So we'll bring the scene graph up there so you can see it quite simply. Put the back reference there and we'll drag and drop the image on top there and now there's two locks so that's that's working quite well it's not as simple as using a program like Maya or Cinema 4D where you can actually look down what we call an orthographic view or a viewport but it gives you a great way to start lining you can see that this skull was clearly made off these images because they just it, it it meets and it fits. Now, if you've got that imagery in, and say you wanted to make these teeth, a great thing that you can do is let's go and make a new layer. So pull down on my non-dominant hand and then sculpt a new layer. Actions, I'll increase a little bit of resolution. Push forward on my thumbstick on my non-dominant hand and go to clay. And then you could just start saying, well, I want, let's just get him in the right place, first of all. Yep. 
There we go. Bring him roughly around here. I'm just spraying in the air with the base is saying and then smooth it all down. And that's how I'd make those teeth. Use the move tool to move them around, however you need. And you'll be able to get the tooth shape that you want. And then obviously make sure you do it from, from different views. So you might, at that point, you might want to pull this out um, and make sure that you're making it, um, uh, the volume is correct from all angles because you can easily make it too flat if you're just working from that one, uh, one angle. Um, and there you go, there's there's a molar done. And that's exactly how I would do this, this in here. I would just start making them like that, one after another, and then I would place them based on my reference in here, like so. Like this. Now, we don't need that at the moment, so we'll pop that back there. Now, if that's all working well, you wanna go to the next stage really, which is how can you get a little bit more detail? So let's bring in another couple more images. So if we go back to image, add this white one for a minute. This is useful and you can make all of these yourself because that's a grid. And you might want to, you might find that a grid is really useful, especially if you're doing mechanical um, or, or, or detailed builds of any kind. So it might be worth you, in, you know, investing a little bit of your time um, to make yourself some images that, uh, that that suit the need, or just download them if you you know if you can find the ones that you need. Now that's useful in itself, but it doesn't help me line up across here or across here. So there's one more thing that we can do. So again, we'll go back to bring an image in, and we've got one here that's actually a transparent PNG. So what that means is we've got the black lines were on one layer and there was nothing on the in-betweens and we saved it out as a PNG and that gives us transparency like that. And you can lay that wherever you want. Why is that useful? So for example, if we were to lay it on the floor like this through the head, just trying to get the scale exactly right, we're scaling it up like so. And then obviously we need to drop it onto our little collection, don't we? You don't need to do what I've done there, one inside another, just to have them all on the layer is, is absolutely fine. We should push them all in like that. As long as they're all moving in the same way, it doesn't actually matter. But there you go. Now, what that does give me, if you look closely, is if I now use the move tool and I've got a reference from that part of the forehead, that part of the mouth, and it's a really, really solid line of, of, of action there. So I can see, from there, straight across there, that nose is too high. So I haven't got symmetry on here. I want that nose, that nose the top of the nose there. Uh, the nasal cavity is too high, so bring that in. And that's a great way to help you line things up. You, you know, if you've got this head as being a problem, you can do this. Make sure you line it. And you can see now the head's not quite right at all. So we'll just grab that and we'll move it down. You don't have the accuracy that you might have in other programs like, um, uh, you know, Maya and Cinema 4D and all, all of the ones where you'd have, you know, wh wherever there's polygons and much more predictable points and edges and vertices. You know, this is a voxel-based program, so it's a little bit less accurate, I would say, um, in that regard. But I find it pretty useful doing it this way. It, it gives me everything that I need in terms of references. And I always bring references in. I'm always bringing a ton of references in. And sometimes what I will do is I'll take a picture here and I'll show you how to do that. So if you hold down the yellow button and do capture photo, you can capture your own photo. So I'll click one, like so, that's gone away. And what that does is I could now bring that image in and actually have an, an image of a, of a variant of the skull in the scene. So I could keep doing it, um, or I could take three quarter images. Let's just take, click, that's another picture gone. Um, maybe I want one from the top. There you go. And, and that can be useful doing it that way, because um, it, it gives you extra images to, to, to use that, have you, that are a variant on what you've been doing. 
Um, and that's pretty much it for, for image references. It, you know, if you know, the first point that, that, that I would say is it's good to have, if you haven't got me in VR, put me in VR first so that I'm helping you while you're in it. And you could rewind me and, and, and basically start again if you're not following this. And then get a grip of the, the, the scene overall. Um, you mean, you wouldn't have these in, as I say, you would be starting like this. So let me just hide all of these. Um, I've even got eyeballs in there, look, underneath, I'd forgotten about them. So, we'll move the eyeball up out of the way. That will pop him in there because it looks quite fun then. So if you were starting like this, um, and you can go clay. Let's go with a nice cream colour. Um, the best way to get a colour, instead of trying to just pick it like that, is if you just take this colour picker, you can pick from the, the image. And that's, that's quite useful. Um, push forward with the thumbstick mirror, and then we've got the mirror plane. And then put one one down, just check what the resolution's like. I'm going to decrease the layer. Anyone who's seen any of my videos, they know I start off with really low res. Um, unless it's for hard surface. Hard surface, I always start high res. Um, so let's just have a look at that with the mirror on. So there's the sphere. I'll go even lower. Um, and then you just come out the front. And then smooth it out. I'll teach you all this over the next few weeks for anyone who's interested. Um, I'm conscious that it is a beginner's course, or, or not so much course, but uh, a beginner's set of videos. So I am, I am really mindful that, uh, that that you need to take your time to learn this stuff. So just follow along each week and just see how far you get with it. You can see now I'm a mile off from my reference, so straight away I'm using that reference to start lining stuff up. If the reference is out, tweet your reference in terms of position. Don't be afraid of moving that once you've once you've got a certain way in. There we go. So I'm not going to do any more because that that's you, you, I think you're getting an idea now of, of how that would be really beneficial for for references. So that does give you a little bit more accuracy, and it's a it you know it is a great way to to, to start something that you you know when you're starting with an idea that you know what what you want. So I'm not making it very clear, am I? So if you know where this is going, i.e. this was a skull, and you've got the reference, well you might as well have it in the scene rather than trying to you know do it any other way. So you've got the combination of the watching VR in VR and having imagery in VR. And that imagery can either be as it is now, traveling with the model, or as as you know from when we started, it could be just like that. We didn't get that out then, did we? Like that. Does that work? No. Trying to put him back out of the scene. He doesn't seem to want to go. There we go. So it could be there hanging in the air in front of you, or even to the side, or wh wherever, like so. Um, and I'd suggest you do all three. So TV in the corner for some, you know, for all the different people uh, whose videos you've got to teach this kind of stuff. Um, imagery hanging in the air and imagery used as a reference on a model. So I hope that's been a great help. Um, in the next video we'll start looking at um, actually getting to grips with the scene graph and more of the basics of, of how to move around and manipulate things in um, Adobe Medium. I hope you're enjoying this kind of content, so please give the video a thumbs up. If you're enjoying it on a weekly basis, then please subscribe and we can let you know when we drop new videos, which is generally on a Wednesday and a Friday.